thematic stuff, sustainable stuff. Yeah. Still a big trend in 2022. We beat it to death in ESG in 2019 and 2020, but it's still there. You just launched the uh, J.P. Morgan Climate Change Solution, TEMP, like that, T-E-M-P. <laughs> uh, it's an actively managed ETF around climate change. How is this set up? How do you do active management on climate change? Yeah, so so this is this is designed with data and refined by research is is what we like to say there. So uh, we're we're taking our proprietary uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning process to evaluate millions of different data points across thirteen thousand different securities to establish a, a a starting basket of companies that could potentially benefit from. Uh, the different climate change solutions and trends that'll emerge uh, on, on the back of that. And then we're refining it by research. And so our, our active analysts are doing fundamental research on every single one of the names and deciding which of those names deserves a spot within the portfolio. And so we, we think we're combining the best of both worlds. The macro story there is, 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 is huge. We estimate there needs to be $140 trillion investment in energy and global infrastructure in order to get to some of the net zero targets uh, that, that many of the countries and regions are, are talking about by 2050. So $140 trillion of investment. These companies are the companies that are working on those solutions right now. And so uh, we're really excited about that. It's the first active um, climate change solution strategy um, to, to, to come out in an ETF, uh, ticker temp. Uh, is, yeah. is, is also a nod towards, uh, towards the temperature as well. Well, well I, I, when I look at this list here, the top holdings, Deer, Eaton, Train, Johnson Controls, I, these are global industrials, essentially. It, it, to what extent are they actually truly participating in climate change solutions? I guess I, I have no problem with the idea that these, these companies are very involved in, in, in affecting the climate. How are they involved in climate change solutions, I guess? Yeah, I think I think that's the, the the point. I think one of the things that that we've observed is, is that uh, climate change affects all different industries. Um, it's not just um, we need to move from you know natural resources to solar or renewables or something like that. That certainly plays a big part of it. But it's also in construction. It's also in agriculture. It's also um, in healthcare and a number of other industries that that need to do that. And so um, that's that's why we think this is such a nuanced conversation. And that you can't just set up a simple rule that screens for, you know, um, you know, the, some some buzzwords that help us stock it into into an index by having the fundamental research that are evaluating those names that you just mentioned, understanding what it is that they're really trying to accomplish when it comes to climate change and making sure that they do deserve a spot in that portfolio and that they can affect change there. That's where we think the active management really comes into play. Yeah, yeah you, and, you do and, want. You, you do understand, I want to get a response there, but you, you do understand that there are a lot of people, when I bring this up, I, I get emails from people who say, you know, Bob, those old global industrials we used to be part of the problem, not part of the solution, and now it's more nuanced. We have to consider, you know, you get the fundamental problem here. There are people who push back pretty heavily every time we do this kind of thing um, uh, about that idea. Dave, you want to respond to that? And what You're going to make a point? Yeah. I I think, I think you're actually right on the money here, right? ESG, climate change investing, whatever, sustainability, it exists on a spectrum, right? And obviously, all the way at one end of the spectrum, you have co companies that are only making a direct impact, and that is their entire reason for existing. All the way on the other, you have companies that have broad ranges of business that are actually changing how they do business to respond to what's going on in climate change. And reasonable people can disagree about whether it's smart to invest on one end of those spectrums or not. What Brian's talking about here and what a lot of the net zero type solutions we've seen launched in the last year are talking about is looking at the global economy from the perspective of what does it look like in a net zero world. It doesn't mean that you no longer manufacture chemicals and no longer put rubber on your car. It means that how you do those things and the impact of those things is going to change. So it doesn't surprise me at all to see a bunch of global industrials on the list there. I think that's actually the right approach when you're trying to think about the global climate change problem. You just have to recognize that's very different than buying a solar energy company. There are different yeah. kinds of investing for different purposes. What Brian's talking about is actually where the institutional market is very strongly headed. $40 billion in flows into ESG ETFs last year. It's a trend that's going to keep continuing. Dave, uh, Brian, uh, you, you anything you want to say about? I think Dave had a very good response there. They, they were part of the problem, and now they're getting more nuance. You, you use the word nuance. I'm reflecting what, what you said, but you understand. I get the emails from people who still don't quite understand how. To, well, how course, is this yeah. part of the global solution? 
Yeah, I, I think that's right. And I would agree with everything that Dave just said. But I, I, you know, I think the other thing when we were designing this, 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 this ETF is we wanted it to be durable. Uh, we wanted yeah. this to be something that could play a role in portfolios for the long term. Uh, we didn't want this to be a market timing thing where I'm in this week, out next week, um, because of you know certain things that got tweeted out or you know what we're seeing in some of the trendy spaces uh, around some of these other areas. We wanted it to be durable and, and have a lasting place in portfolios. Um, and as a fiduciary, that's how we're kind of thinking about that. So I, I definitely understand some of those names have um, you know have have kind of that nature to them, but. Uh, that's that's how we designed this um, with with intentionality in mind.